1968, we had six weeks to do a television script, and you wouldn't do anything else during that period. And the agency only made one recommendation, so you only had to produce one. Mm. It had to go through all the internal systems. But, you know, doing things overnight was just unheard of. I suppose a few retail businesses did. But I think that's the biggest thing, is time and the amount of money available. Yeah, it certainly seems to have sped up since 2008 a lot. I think the the budget pressures just means that people have been able to sp spend less time on things and then that's become a norm. I was really, really lucky. There was just so much time and so much... It, it wasn't huge amounts of money to throw around, but it, you know, it wasn't anything like an issue. Mm. You know, a, a brief would come with a decent budget. Um, and, you know, that has all gone, I think. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess the, the, the same amount of budget, or probably slightly less budget, is still there, but it just has to spread itself over more and more channels. And particularly, you know, a big chunk of budget now goes into, I guess, things like search, which is mm. very important for business now. Um, it goes into always on social, which is very fast turnaround. It's, you know, producing potentially sort of content or something, something to say every day or something to say every week. Um, and that all takes away from, I guess, the pot that everyone has to play with. Yeah, I suppose that's true. But that fragmentation of media has... Um, the budgets haven't suddenly gone course. up. Yeah, no, they haven't. Yeah, they've just got to divvy it up even further. Yeah. I've certainly se seen a little bit of a change in clients, but mind you, again, because of my background, we've always had very different relationships with clients because we are off as often dealing with the kind of the CEOs and the people actually looking at business as, as the, the people in marketing. Um, one of the reasons that I went and set up Mr President is actually to be very, very focused on working with really good clients. So we've got a bit of a mantra about only working with clients who want to leave a legacy. So clients that are interested in doing new stuff because it's incredibly difficult, I think, otherwise to get really great work out. There's so many aspects to this. One is actually the hierarchy within client companies. <clears throat> there have been chains of people who can only say no and can't say yes. Uh, we've had to deal with for decades. Mm. Some are better than others. But it is true to say that say, when a place like CDP with Frank Lowe, or even before that actually with John Ritchie, um, was in its heyday, there were very, very short lines of communication. Mm. And, you know, the glory days of Doyle Dane in New York in the 60s, it was usually Bill Birnbach talking direct to the top bloke at the client. The whole notion of golf, golf course relationship was held in contempt Actually, sometimes it was a really, really positive thing. Because if at the 19th hole, the agency chief said, by the way, your chaps are giving my chaps a bit of bother with this work, which I assure you is brilliant, you know, it would be fixed that afternoon. Mm. So when you had a, in quotes, creative head of the agency who had those relationships with the head of clients, it could be enormously beneficial, as it was in the case of Frank Lowe. Mm. Thirty years, funnily enough, is not a long time when you consider that the basic agency model has remained more or less the same since about 1890 when it was first formed. And although different people break away and form it, they say this is going to be different because we are two media people or we are two creative people or we are two account people. Um, Within years, if they're successful, they've realised they needed all those other things they had, which they so despised at the place they left, and they've reformed the mothership. And I, I actually see no reason why that won't continue to happen, because if the task is basically the same, then probably the model will remain the same. I don't know. I wonder whether, because things are always changing, you know, thing um you know you've seen big agencies suck all the little agencies up and then all these little agencies form and then mm. it kind of happens again buying all the digital things and then being mm. a bespoke digital shop or you know i wonder whether there is a movement that we kind of haven't seen yet where clients will start to do a lot of this stuff in-house and actually agencies will become irrelevant until they realize that they need someone that's slightly independent of themselves yeah. and, 